So one of the reasons we're here today is to discuss your brand new book, The Greater Good. She's absolutely stunning. And I would like to start with, there's an amazing quote you have written here in um, your foreword and you say, these recipes are edible activism, ethical hedonism. What? <laughs> that is so beautiful. When I read that, it gave me chills. Can you just talk me through what that means to you? Well, for me, like, you know, as a 15 year old turning vegan, as you can imagine, I mean, I was already really um, a sort of environmental activist at the time. And then I got all around animal rights and um, I was kind of a nightmare. Like I would just go around being a real pain to everybody and giving everybody shit for eating meat. And that was my activism. And then I got really involved in um, protests and flyer drops and stickering in supermarkets and the whole shebang. And what I eventually found was that it made me really uncomfortable eventually because I felt like I was caring for animals by caring less for humans. Right, right. And that didn't sit right with me. I needed to find a way to encourage plant-based eating and encourage um, the rights of animals alongside humans. Yeah. Um, like with, a synergy, without, really. Yeah, yeah, without alienating anybody, without um, being aggressive. And for me, that came about through food, eventually. And so how did you find your balance? How did you manage? Because obviously, you're obviously very, um, you're very self-aware, and you were aware of what you were doing. So how did you find that balance? Yeah, it just took a long time. Um, just slowly feeling like it was important. It just became more and more important to me to just be really kind to everybody as well as animals and need and find that um, you know I would I would go to family events and take um, a great vegan dish and I felt that had more impact on people's opinions than going and shitting on everyone else's dish. <laughs> Which you don't Amazingly, really want to do. <laughs> no. All right, yeah. well, let's talk about the book. So the greater good. What does this mean to you? Well, I mean that that title is a um, it's another brilliant idea from the brilliant, amazing writers group that I'm part of in, in Facebook, this um, community of, of female writers. And um, when I first opened Greater Goods, um, I'm gonna keep start getting those two names confused now that we've got this book, The Greater Good. But um, when I first opened Greater Goods, I had sort of workshopped the name of the place with, um, with that group and they came up with Greater Goods. And then we did the same thing with the cookbook. But honestly, for years, Journalists were always using my name in puns right, yeah. um, around my music and I would, you know, Flip Grader was always a bit of a strange stage name for a folk artist. I would arrive in towns in Italy and they were expecting like a punk band and stuff. Oh. Um, so it was a very strange one and then when I did the cookbook tour, you can imagine the puns, it was out of control. And so eventually I just thought, I might as well lean into this own it. Yeah, yeah, I just really like yeah. go hard with it. Give it resonance. Also because I'm a fifth generation butcher, I've got this huge background fifth of- Fifth generation butcher? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You flipped that on the head, didn't you? Yeah, exactly. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Had to be done. <laughs> you know, the, this huge family history of, of fishing and hunting and um, butchery. And my grandfather was the son, was the grandson um, in the butcher shop in Sunderland called Greater and Sons. Right. <clears throat> so I sort of thought when I first opened Greater Goods, I was imagining it more of a butchery. Um, so I thought I would sort of um, subvert w what that idea was and sort of also as a kind of homage. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um, to that family. Amazing history. evolution. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's what sort of happened. And then slowly the, the butchery side of things morphed into more of a delicatessen to be more in line with what we're actually like and what we like. Yeah. Now I have had, um, I've been one of the lucky ones and I've been able to have a little look through it and it has a real beautiful Parisian vibe like and I know that you met your husband in Paris. So did you ever consider maybe settling in, um, in Paris or France instead of coming back to Christchurch? Yeah, in fact when we got to Christchurch we were coming for three months. We were just coming for our wedding. My father had an organic vegetable farm oh. in Amberley and my thought was, we'll go out there and have this Canterbury wedding and then we'll head back to France. Next minute, we've been here, <laughs> what, seven years? 
So how did that happen? What happened? Well, Were you like drugged I mean, and you woke up and it was like seven years later? We got pregnant. Oh. And then I was like, it'd be good to have the baby here and then we'll go back. And then it was like, well, it'd be good to raise her a little bit here with her fam with extended family around here. And then we'll go back. And then COVID and then, then we kind of love the place. Yeah. You know, so just roots after roots and we are here. We're, here, we're really Christchurch people now. Yeah, and I think for me, on as a, you know, a foodie person out on the streets in the hoods, Greater Good has a real iconic kind of feel about it. It's like the first of the first of many amazing venues that has lots of captures, but also is a plant-based yummy place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I think is really important for, yeah. um, for Christchurch. I feel like that's so true and, and so important. I've, I, too much of the time, veganism and plant-based eating is around the raw food, the healthy food sort of vibe. And it was important to me that, it, that the food here and the food in the book be really focused on it being delicious first yeah. and then just happens to be plant-based. Yeah. Um, I think that's when it's more effective. I think that's how we capture more people that are plant curious um, to really delve into that. and. Also for these foods to exist alongside traditional antipasti products and just be a, a delicious alternative, alternative as yeah. opposed to a poor cousin. Yeah. I mean, I've looked through the book and every page is, for me, a book has to make me salivate. And every page I am salivating, even when it's just hands and movement, yeah. there's a melody within it that you've created that is just so exquisite. And I think that's that's part of you and you and the, the Parisian element you bring in. It's just amazing amazing yeah. so look let's talk about being a mother and being a businesswoman and what that means i mean bloody yeah, hell that's a lot it's a <laughs> it's a lot yeah um especially with with lockdowns and and sick days and all that sort of stuff that we have these days but um yeah it's been a challenge to to start a business with a small child um obviously it's getting easier but anais has been part of this journey since the beginning she was you know part of that experience in the kitchen she was my little sous chef when I was working from home and now she's here and she brings things to tables and clears tables for us. She's she's really as much a part of the space as we are. Yeah, that's really beautiful. What would you say to any women out there who are considering starting their own business and they have children? What, how do you begin? Hmm. Hard not to say don't do it. <laughs> no, I, I would say just just begin, just like start and get support around you and talk to people that, are, that have done it and are doing it. And um, it's doable, it's just, it's just juggled. Like the juggle is real for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes as well, as a, as a mother as well and a businesswoman, you have to be really open to failing. Yeah. The failing are the steps up to the mountain, aren't yeah. they? They're the ones that kind of take you to the top. Otherwise, for me, you're just standing at the bottom. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to do, you just have to try things and see what works and, and then adjust if it's not working and find new ways to do things. Like we started with one little kitchen and it was three days a week, just during the hours that Anais was in daycare. And then as she got more used to daycare and could go more hours, then our opening hours were longer. Yeah. And you know, there was just that ability and then ro roping in friends that lived close by to pick her up when I was running late and all that sort of stuff, you know, the village really, really um, comes into play. So you apply everything to your life as a mother and then you yeah. kind of make it bigger and bigger as your child gets bigger. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Also, I, I, originally when she was born, I, I found it hard to compartmentalise. I felt like there was too many different hats going on. Being a mum of a small kid felt like a totally different role to being a musician, to being a, um, a, a cook. And all of those things felt very different and I felt like I had to switch between the modes Whereas as she gets older and as I got used to those roles, they sort of morphed into one and I didn't have to take off one hat to put on the other as much. It just yeah. sort of became more naturally my whole identity and that they all work together much more um, fluidly. Yeah, I think as well, I, um, when you're a, you become a new mother, as your child grows, you're growing as that parent. Yeah. I think people forget that. Yeah. that you're creating your own template for a parent in your family, whether it's your own business or whether you work going out to work or whatever you're doing. And I think we need to be more kind to ourselves as you know, mothers who are out there doing our own business and oh, 100%. making it work. Yeah. We're running the world, people. We're running yeah. the world. Okay, yeah. so look, I've got a series of quick fire questions. Okay. And I'm calling it fill the blank. Okay. okay. Is that all right? So they're kind of quick yeah. fire and I'll just go da -da -da -da, fill the blank. Okay. Cheers. Cheers to the greater goods. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. 
Oh, mm. yum. So oh, nice. my days. Okay, so fill the blanks. Ready? Okay. Actually, how can I do this? Right, this way. <laughs> Family means blank. Mm, togetherness. Togetherness, that's beautiful. Mm, okay. When you want to be alone, you... Puzzle. Puzzle? What, puzzle. What Jig type of puzzles? Jigsaw. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a, millions of pieces? Thousands, but not millions. But yeah, yeah, I'm a puzzler. So you've got to dedicate your space at home for your puzzles? I do. Wow, and if you get it all together and there's one piece missing? I'm fine with it. I'm Are actually, you? Yeah, I mean, I have a five-year-old, so it's inevitable. Oh, right, yeah. okay. That's amazing, okay. <laughs> Blank is on your nightstand. Ah, uh, water at all times. And valerian root. And valerian root? Yeah. I'm not reading at the moment at bedtime, but I always take valerian root to sleep. And what is valerian root? It's a herb that you can take, and my one is with kava, with kava root as well. Um, and yeah, you, you take it or drink it and it helps you sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank it's you. Lovely. Yeah. Where do you get it? I get mine from my herbal doctor, Richard Whelan. He's amazing. Um, but you can get it at all like health stores, yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Thank you, Valerian Root. Okay, the last TV series you binged and enjoyed was? Mmm, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso. And what's that? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> on, was that on Neon, Netflix? What was that on? It's on Apple. Right. And it is joyful and encouraging and hilarious. Um, a concert you'll never forget was? Oh, um, gosh, Leonard Cohen. Mm, where was that? That was here in Christchurch, actually. Um, at that big stadium, they change their names all the time, I can't remember what it's called. But um, also, I opened for, I was part of a showcase at South by Southwest one year where I was playing just before Chris Christopherson. So when my set finished, I sat on the ground and right in front of him oh and watched him goodness. and it was amazing. Oh my days. Yeah. How big was the crowd? It was in this, we were in like, it was a part of a, a sort of special showcase, like a side thing where it was invite only kind of vibes. And so it was just in like a, a floor of a hotel room that had been taken over yeah. by the festival. And I think it was like only a hundred of us in there. So it's really cool. intimate. Oh yeah. my goodness, God, yeah. give me the chills. Okay, a plate of food that feeds your temp inner temple is? Noodles. Noodles? All day long. With any, what are we talking? Any kind of noodles, honestly, yeah. Really? Yeah, and it's that's why it was really, um, it was really fun for me to try to lean into the European cooking for greater goods and for the greater good because Asian food has always been my wheelhouse. Right, yeah. And so ramen, udon, um, you know, every kind of rice noodle salad, every kind of rice noodle soup, yeah. Yeah, and the Asian Asian people, um, the culture does um, vegan vegetarianism oh. with lots of personality and lots of flavor, lots of texture, lots of fresh, and it's, yeah. yeah. And I think that's why it was important for me that greater goods be something different because over the years, you know, when I turned vegan, I had to take my own soy milk to cafes because nobody had that yet. And I would yeah. literally just hand it to them and ask them to make me a, a latte. Um, but things have changed so much. But still, over all this time, Asian food has always been the easy go-to for vegans. Yeah. There hasn't been sort of European alternatives and like classic things that traditionally had um, meat and cheese um, in them and egg but made vegan, so that's what we really wanted to offer as, a, as an alternative. Yeah. yeah, and these days you can turn that meat frown up upside down with when you just buy Mexican, Jamaican, yeah, all, lots of different, Indian, you can kind totally. of, you can create something quite quick now. God, yeah. I can't imagine what it must be like. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of pulses in <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't, I just can't <laughs> imagine. Wow, yeah. wow. So people always get blank wrong about you. Hmm. What do people get wrong about me? Um, my name, actually. <laughs> really? No. no um, is Flip short for anything? It's short for Flipper. It's yeah. short for Flipper? Your like, full name is Flipper? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing they get wrong. My name is Claire. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't go by that very often. To no. You don't look like a Claire. No, right? How did the Flip come about then? Um, when I was an environmental activist as a teenager, people started calling me Flipper because I, I started this petition to save 
um, hectares dolphins off Banks Peninsula oh, right. from, from um, net fishing. So people started calling me Flipper and singing the Flipper tunes, a theme song every time I was around and it kind of stuck and when I started doing music it, it, it um, just kind of continued. Oh, so you really adopted it. Do your parents call you Flip or do they call you Claire? My father calls me Flip and my mother calls me Claire. <laughs> yeah, mother's always <laughs> yeah, Jacqueline like, to my mum. I called like, you a name for a reason. Like, oh, my name for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flip in it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so. <laughs> well, it's funny because in French, Flip is a kind of exclamation, like flippy, like you, if you flippy, it means like you've, you're freaking out. It's like if you, it's like a way of like freaking out. That doesn't sound like you though, you sound real chill. Yeah, right? Yeah. Do you speak French at home? Uh, we used to a lot. We've kind of gotten out of the habit lately, but Anais is now doing a French program and a French immersion school, so we're trying to pick it back up. Oh, beautiful. God. Yeah, my French is rusty as hell. Mm, I bet it's better than mine. Mm -hmm. Petit pois, that's it. Um, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Favourite album of all time is? Hmm. All time? It would have to be Gillian Welsh, Time's a re 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 Revelator. Revelator? Time's Relevator. <laughs> <laughs> Revelator. <laughs> Time's Relevator. Who's Gill Gillian Welsh? Um, she is an alternative country singer. Kiwi? From the, from the States. States. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, Followed by Tom Waits, Bad Is Me, I think is the name of the album. Yeah. Do you have that on vinyl or do, do you have vinyl? I do not have any vinyl right now, no. Mm. In fact, I don't know what to do with my CDs these days. I've got nothing to play them on. Earrings, mate. Loads of earrings. <laughs> okay, so blank was the first thing you ever saved up for? A guitar. Mm. Yeah. I suck at saving, but yeah. How old were you? I must have been like 21, just starting to write songs and play them publicly. Um, and needed a guitar that was better than, that could plug in. I needed Ooh. a guitar that could plug in so I could do it on stage. Do you still have it? No. no. I've gone through a lot of guitars over the years. Really? The first night that I moved to Paris, my guitar got stolen. That guitar? No. Oh, right. No, um, my favorite guitar still to this day. It was my second Takamini and yeah, it was stolen the first night that I arrived um, gutting. And I started a like a Kickstarter vibe, like donation to and yeah, and my supporters were so kind and helped fund a new guitar and I still have that one. It's a guild, it's beautiful, but it's not my Takamini. No, wow, yeah. wow. People are mean, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so this is the last one. Your Sunday roast must include Mm. Must contain must include greens, right? Because I can't handle too much like roast heavy food. I'm not an oven cooker. I'm a stove cooker much more of the time. Um, so I need the light. I need the bitter. I need bright and light and bitter mm. alongside anything that's heavy. Nice. Oh yeah. So nice balance on the plate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Flip, it's been amazing talking to you. You've been just incredible, and Appreciate I will look always. out for the greater good. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, You're Welcome. Jeff.